You know, when you really think about it, there's maybe a handful of games that kind of just influences all the games you're really going to love, like, way down the line, right? What are the games that are interesting to me or, like, exciting for me, you know, in the next couple of months or maybe a year from now, right? But what are the games that made me so interested in those kind of games to begin with, right? And so I decided to look back at sort of my personal most influential games of my life. You know, the games that made me so interested in those kind of things in general. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that these influential games are my favorite games of all time. I think those are very different. I think you can have a game that influences the type of stuff you enjoy while also, you know, thinking that games that came after that are sort of better in a lot of ways. Uh, but these are usually your first instances into like a certain genre or something like that that influenced your love for games like that. So I picked five games and I'm going to just go through each and every one and talk about why I feel those games influenced me and kind of like just how I felt about it, right? Starting us off, I think uh, my, I, there's no particular order, but I, my first game is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, why does this game influence me? Uh, basically because I think it just sort of gave me a massive appreciation and love for anything Metroidvania. I didn't really play Metroid back in the day, I only really played Metroid Prime. That was actually my first Metroid game. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, however, made me fall in love with games like that. So that's kind of what made me play Super Metroid and Metroid games, you know, after that. Like, I kind of went back and played them, that sort of thing, appreciated them for what they are. And many games that I played after that, like Ori and the Blind Forest and many other Metroidvanias out there, um, I got into them because Symphony of the Night was so well done and so perfect to me. And I think that a big reason why I also started loving Metroidvania games after Symphony of the Night is because of, kind of goes in conjunction with another game that I, I, I want to mention that is also one of my five influential games. Uh, which is uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The main reason I think Ocarina of Time is so influential to me, right, is because it kind of started my love for like adventure games, uh, exploration games, and RPGs. And I know you're gonna, I know what you're thinking. Hold on, hold on, I know what you're thinking. Just hold that thought. I know Zelda's not an RPG, but my little kid brain, <laughs> when I was a little kid, I could not tell the difference, right? So if I saw an RPG game, like Final Fantasy or like Chrono Trigger, that kind of thing. I couldn't see the difference between that and Zelda. Like, I, you know, you see, as a kid, you just see like medieval fantasy and you just think, oh, swords and magic, that's the same thing, right? I know now that that's not the same thing. I know Zelda's not an RPG, it's more of like an action adventure game. But, you know, as a kid, I couldn't really tell. So it kind of kickstarted that for me. So after I played Ocarina of Time, I love that. Even though Ocarina of Time has such a tiny world to what we're used to now, back then, to me, that world was huge and I was able to explore and find things, discover things, and I just had that love for it. I loved the adventure aspect of the game and that was what made me fall in love with it so much. And it's weird too because I did play A Link to the Past before this, like I, I played it before, but I didn't feel that sense of grand adventure until Ocarina of Time. Maybe it's just the way the game was you know, done, maybe it's because it was 3D, I don't know, but that was like the game that kind of made me fall in love with, you know, exploration and that setting of what that a lot of RPGs are kind of set into. So if I didn't play Ocarina of Time and if I didn't play Symphony of the Night, I probably wouldn't love exploration as much as I do. And again, once because of Zelda, I probably wouldn't have been as into RPGs as I am now. So it's kind of just like, even though Zelda isn't an RPG, my small kid brain saw that as the same thing and decided to try out other actual RPGs that, you know, kind of, you know, it just kind of went down that road and I kept going. So I kind of think those two games go hand in hand a little bit, but those two, my love for Metroidvanias, exploration, RPGs, adventure, all that stuff can be kind of just narrowed down to those two and that's why I feel like those two are huge in my uh, like influence I guess for those kind of things. Now I am going to talk about something that I guess is uh, not really Nintendo but kind of Nintendo but not really Nintendo I guess. Um, chances are the footage you're seeing now is going to be from the most modern version of the game but this is not the version of the game that I got into initially but uh, the game that is the most influential is Killer Instinct. 
Um, the reason for that is because Killer Instinct is probably the earliest memory I have actually playing any kind of fighting game. So, even though a lot of people got into fighting games with something like, you know, Street Fighter, and I guess because you would expect as a Smash channel, you would think Smash 64 is probably my first, but it really wasn't. I was playing Killer Instinct and Mortal Kombat way before Smash 64 was even a thing. I already had an interest in fighting games. I just didn't understand it very well at the time, but I had an interest in it. So... KI was kind of just my first actual foray into a fighting game. I, I remember even having the soundtrack because uh, my brother was also a fan of the, the games and so he bought the soundtrack. And I remember just being a small kid listening to the soundtrack and playing Killer Instinct and just being so into it. So when they rebooted it recently, I was it's like, you know, I was hyped, you know. <laughs> so Killer Instinct is kind of just like really fun and I wish it was had more of a presence on the modern day now I know uh, Maximilian dude started this whole hashtag bring back KI so please Microsoft whether it's for the Scarlet or whether you just feel like it bring back Killer Instinct it is like a beloved game is a big community for it and uh, I think it'll make you a lot of money so I say go for it why not now bringing it back to Nintendo um, well, I guess Killer Instinct was kind of Nintendo. I mean, it, the original was a, a Super Nintendo game, so what am I saying? Yeah, it was Nintendo. What am I, uh, don't listen to me. It was made by Rare. But going back to, I guess, Nintendo-developed games, there you go, that's what I should have said. Um, I have Super Mario Bros. 3 as my fourth most influential. The reason for that is because uh, it, it's kind of like, I played the original Super Mario Bros., but I didn't really love platformers because of it. Like, yeah, you know, it was a big game and it was beloved. I get that. It was. But uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 was what felt like the first mastered version of that. I get, if that makes sense. Like, you always have, like, the first of something and then the mastered version of it. Right? And I felt like Super Mario Bros. was just the beginning. And then Super Mario Bros. 3 was the first time I played, like, a masterful version of that genre. For that reason, I feel like that's the most influential game in terms of platformers for me. Like, if I didn't play Super Mario Bros. 3, I probably wouldn't have bothered playing Super Mario World or maybe 64, Odyssey, um, and Shantae, and a lot of these other, like, platformer-based IPs. Um, Mega Man, Castlevania. I probably wouldn't have even played Symphony of the Night. And even then, to that extent, I probably would have even played a lot of adventure games. So... A lot of credit goes to Super Mario Bros. 3, and I feel like it's it's a super influential game for that reason. So yeah, it kind of has to be up here. Only one left. So what is this game? Okay, well, you know, you guys know I love this series. If you come through my streams often, I've streamed it a few times. I've talked about my love of this game before, but um, my fifth most influential game is Doom. And the reason for that is because without Doom, there's so many games that I'm currently into right now that I would not be into if this game didn't hit the market. It's kind of wildly considered to be the, the father of all shooters, with Wolfenstein 3D kind of being the grandpappy of all shooters. Um, and to an extent, they're right. A lot of games that uh, came after Doom that were shooters um, based themselves off of engines that based themselves off of Doom, if that makes sense. So, Wolfenstein 3D was kind of like what I guess you could call the Super Mario Brothers to the Super Mario Brothers 3 kind of analogy I made earlier, where Wolfenstein 3D was the first uh, crack at that sort of like, you know, design, I suppose, and Doom was the mastered version of that. So, it, Doom just felt like, because of the verticality, because of the way the levels worked and whatnot, it just felt so diverse in every episode that it was so well-crafted. It, it's, it's like, it's so hard to explain to someone who doesn't play shooters, and I know most of my fan base probably doesn't play shooters, considering that, you know, this is mostly a Nintendo channel, but Doom has been on Nintendo before. Hell, Doom even has, like, an exclusive game on the Nintendo 64. I feel like most Nintendo fans don't know that or they don't talk about it or something because normally when I see fans talk about like the 64, they always make it seem like the 64's good games only came from Nintendo or Rare. But no, Doom 64 is a thing. It existed and it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. I liked it a lot. I, I don't know. Uh, look, all I'm saying is like, if Doom wasn't a thing, you would not have so many of the shooters that are out now. And I know a lot of you don't play shooters, but I love shooters. Shooters is probably the genre that I play the most if it's not 
like platformer fighters or platformers to an extent. It's like I play a lot of shooters. I've played pretty much almost every Call of Duty, which I know is probably blasphemous to people <laughs> watching this video. I play Fortnite, also blasphemous to a lot of you guys because I know my fan base is not the type who likes those kind of things, but that's what it is. And I played a lot of Halo. I've played a lot of Doom. I've played a lot of these games. I played Perfect Dark, Goldeneye, I played all of these things. And I wouldn't have played any of them and have fallen in love with any of them if it wasn't for the success that was Doom. And that, that's kind of all it is. It's probably my most replayed game of all time. <laughs> like, I've probably played that game and beat it like several hundred times. So, that's kind of just what I'm trying to get at. But, that's kind of it. And... Uh, the great thing about these franchises is that they're all franchises that are still a thing, except for Castlevania. That's kind of iffy on that. Like, we might not ever get an actual Castlevania game. But, you know, Mario's, of course, there's still going to be Mario games. Of course, there's still going to be Zelda games. You know, we have, we have Doom Eternal still releasing soon. And it, it, it feels like most of these franchises that I mentioned are pretty much, like, they're good, you know? So I'm happy. And I, I'm excited for Breath of the Wild 2 because it gives me the exact adventure that I, I love the games for and, I, I, you know, I fell in love with. And the same thing goes for Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal, I know for a lot of you, you probably think, oh, that looks cool. But for me, I'm excited as hell for it. It's probably my number one most anticipated game of this year. Straight up. Like, it, it, it probably is. So that's kind of just giving you an idea of how excited I am for this game. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Those are my most influential games of all time. These are the games that kind of just defined my taste in just video games as a whole. So let me know guys how you feel about those games. Maybe you're a big fan of them too, or maybe you just don't care. And if that's the case, that's totally fine. <laughs> uh, but let me know in the comments down below what your five most influential games. Yeah, show me that. I will, uh, so I can judge you guys too. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's kind of it. Like the video if you like it, dislike if you disliked it. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. And those that tasted the bite of his sword named him.